put four scoops of maize in here and this is just for your mouse trap feed so now I'll put four scoops of pellet just like that and I'll mix it through thoroughly mm -hmm. these are um, psycho baits and then I'll put some tiger nuts but what I do with my tigers after I've cooked them I crush them because we've realized that a pre-crushed tiger nut has got a lot more attraction than just a plain tiger nut and because it's got different shapes and sizes the fish actually get stupid they don't realize that it's something that um, can cause them a sore lip so I've got four scoops, four scoops, one scoop. I only put one scoop of tiger nuts in because I don't want to um, get the fish onto tigers. Although tigers are a great fish catcher, it is not good for the nutrition of the fish. They will end up only eating tigers, but, they, but their weights will go backwards because there's lots of fiber in, but a very, very small percentage of proteins and nothing else. Right, then hemp. Now hemp you can be pretty generous. I'll put six scoops in. Two. Again I'll mix them all through. Right, and then you see how much coarse salt is there? All of it. Carp love salt. And they love the minerals in the salt. But what the salt also does is the salt changes the pH of the, of the water in the area that you're fishing in. So with us using a highly flavored hook bait, if I put salt in my feed and I feed a general area, now I never feed a small area. I always spread my feed out over a wider area because I want the fish to come in and become preoccupied. So the take something there, take something there, take something there, take something there and then encounter your hook bait. But the other fish that's in the area will not be spooked off by that fish suddenly having a fit. And that's why I keep on saying, I say, you know, Yanni, Sunny and Dani is, is swimming like uh, eating here, eating there, how's your mother, eating there, eating there and then all of a sudden Yanni is gone. So Sunny tells Donny, where's Yanni? I don't know. And they just carry on. And that's that's the principle that we that I'm showing, I'm, I'm telling people. We've experienced that at, at Rurikopi's Dam so many times. That you'll get a run and 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 a run. Alright, now guys, what do we do? We don't have any rods in the water. Right, start all over again. Do the same. So by having the fish preoccupied is a good thing I don't want to feed the fish for the sake of feeding them I want to feed the fish so that they can enjoy what they're eating because a carp don't have a stomach a carp has got a free flow system so he'll eat break down and absorb what needs to be absorbed and the rest goes down the waste channel and it carries on like that so if you put a load of bait in a small area the fish goes into a feeding frenzy they eat and they and they and they and they go I want them to gradually I, I that must be like goodness gracious what's happening here okay you know and they start picking off but they stay in your swim for a longer period of time if you put a lot of bait out the fish are gonna eat and move off and they're not going to come back so by spreading it out you're actually enlarging your actual fishing area because you can put your bait there or you can put it there or you can put it there it's very different in a lake like Donaldson then where, where Cliffy uh, fished and where I fished for many years there you've got a very specific little area the lake is only about this deep on average so you can actually see where you drop your bait there again you're not going to put large amounts of bait you're literally going to be mouse trapping or putting up um, uh, they've now got a boilie only approach which boilies and pallets I think eh? 
so you you actually can't put too much in um, you you just want to mousetrap so I've now got that with the um, with the salt in so what I've got here I've got essential IB boilies that I've that I've chopped in half and some I've crushed so you can see there there's a, a variety of size elements in there so I'll just put three hands full of that in and I've I've coated them with a smart liquid so now I've got a mousetrap feed and a feeding feed and it ends up looking like that the only thing I would change when it comes to rotocopies this time of the year or even Harties in Nanda Dam is I'll just take the pellets away because the catfish are still a little bit active the these boilies are not made with eggs it's made with egg powders and egg albumin so they don't have the same vo uh, level of attraction to the catfish that uh, a freshly made boilie like like these ones it's got a lovely lovely smell but oh, these yeah. these were made with eggs so i will not chance this to go into um a lake with lots of catfish at this point uh, probably June we yeah, are about the middle of June middle of June last year we nailed the carp just fishing boilies we decided the one weekend let's let's see what happens we had a little bit of crushed tiger nuts we had a little bit of maize and we had lots of hemp and we pretty much fed with boilies and caught with boilie hook baits and we had 47 fish for the weekend all right so this is the this is the one element of what we do now i'm going to show you remember i mentioned if you go out and you find that that magic spot how do you mark that spot because even a lake like this um when we started fishing here we used zigs and we had great results on zigs guys are fishing rotocopies dam and gets great results on zig rigs um, and and zig rigs produces those bonus fish that you would normally not catch because they're not on the bottom so what we do we use the super zig mix so i'll put some in here you'll see the cloud that it makes so prep liquids here so i literally have a little bucket of water and I've got the mainline condensed coconut syrup and some smart liquid and all you do is you just just mix it through and add it to this mix now the particles in this in this zig liquid are in this um, sloppy mix will suspend in the water column it creates a massive cloud so that's how it looks like it's just like a porridge and all we do we just add it to our particle mix and i'll show you now what the effect is besides marking your swim actually gives you a huge amount of attraction right in that water column the smell is divine right and there's your final element that's how the mix now looks like now let's throw this in the water and you'll see why this is so potent got the ledge and then it drops off it's got a almost a two meter drop so right are you ready look at this so what it does is it actually pulls all that flavor all the way from the surface all the way to the bottom now you've got suspended particles You'll see right on the edges there are some suspended particles that's hanging in mid water. 
Yeah, you see the small particles that's yeah. hanging yeah. in the water. That's cool. Now there are uh, coconut shavings, pieces pieces of desiccated coconut. Now what it does is it absorbs the water, it goes down, it gets to a certain level, and then it starts coming up again. Yeah. So it gives you that up and down yeah. effect all day long. Now the, the the nice thing now is I've now for argument's sake dropped that in the water and that cloud is going to sit there for enough time for me to take my rod swing it out put it on that cloudy area and then put more bait on and look right down there people say or there was um, guys saying in, 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 in years gone by if you put a, a, a lump of particles in the water it's going to have a cone effect down the water it doesn't wherever I've dropped that it goes all the way down and it doesn't cone at all so if I if I spread the area yes that's a different effect but now I've literally dropped it there and I've only put bait on that small amount of space now literally for me mousetrap is one maximum two hands like this this is what a mousetrap is you don't really need more than that um, you know when we fish a place like Rurikopi's dam you can put another hand out there and another hand out there you know to drag the fish in but for normal fishing two handfuls are more than adequate right now when we cast with braid, the critical importance is to have your spool wet. So that sunlight liquid water I use to spray on my spool. Now what it does is it actually lubricates my line and it prevents wind knots. Then of course very important is that you've got to wet your guides so I wet all the guides make sure that it's perfectly wet and um, I've got this very clever little tool that I can use to fill up my spawn without getting my hands wet uh, dirty so Oh, for the Let's try again. Yeah. Right. Now, the cost. The casting style or casting method that I use is exactly the same as when I cast a lead. Um, we, at the World Casting, uh, World, World Carp Championships, we were forced to stand stationary when casting. So the the stance is pretty much. I'm just going to cast to that blue drums there. So it's literally put my weight on my front foot and then transfer the weight to the back foot and cast so I'm going to just quickly run through the style and how do I aim at the spot and hit the, the, the target every time now we've measured that, that was 137 meters to the blue drums and with a headwind so I'll quickly show you I split my fingers between the reel seat and I take my thumb and I press my thumb against my middle finger right so my trigger finger is loose now what you must try and remember is that this hand is holding a cricket ball and you are standing on the boundary and you need to hit the wickets so you can't throw flat you've got to throw it high so by throwing high automatically you look up so what I do is I lock my neck so that I can look up at 45 degrees and I can release at 45 degrees. 
So what happens is effectively my hand, my left hand, my pulling hand is at 45 degrees and I use my thumb and my forefinger by overlapping them I've got a got a, a area to aim at. So that is my aim. Right? So all I do is by looking up towards my hand and pulling through all the way I release with this hand um, up with this hand where I started off with this hand so I'm just replacing hands and I'm creating what they call a pivot point so if you take an entire rod and you bring the rod all the way through you are moving the rod you're not moving the tip it's like what Ernie Els does with his swing they don't call him the big easy for nothing because it literally is uh, easy back easy through that's exactly what we do all right so just watch what i do so again i'm going to aim at the blue drums and i'm going to come back and right so i don't be you know i try and create my rod has got it to remain upright all the way through and i've got it i want to throw that stone or that cricket ball so that you've got to try and visualize you've got to try and throw that 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 thing don't don't push the rod because that will never give you proper distance you want to pass close to stop all the same technique same technique same technique all I don't do when I do it when I do a close range and I'm just gonna do a close range one quickly without anything in the spawn so it's literally aiming and doing exactly the same the big thing is to lock your neck because a lot of people look in front of them so they want to cause there and they end up going flat and remember 45 degrees up means when it reaches the peak it's going to go 45 degrees down so that is the longest pass that you can make right so for a spawn you normally use a slightly shorter drop than what you would do on a casting a lead so casting a lead you'll probably have half the, the rod distance okay so i'm gonna go aiming at the blue drums and What's the reason for having a shorter drop on the spawn? Because remember the spawn is very heavy and you need to you need to create because if you have a very long drop the spawn has the tendency of going like that through the air so I want to I want to load the rod and get it airborne as quick as possible now if you have too stiff a rod you're going to force the spawn open We've had that in the past where we had rods that wasn't dedicated for spawning and when you start, you know, spawning at 166 meters, you've got to put in a lot of powder and that is what normally creates the problem and that's when, you, when things start going wrong. Um, now, by doing the 45 degrees and not going all the way down and up, that's when you get wrap-ups or what they call wrap-ups. The minute you go past that magic point and you because you need to this is this is like in the olden days a clay line so if you put that clay on and you throw it you have to make the rod do the work not your arms so my right hand is just the steering wheel because i steer the spawn with the rod because if you pull the rod to the to the to the right the spawn goes to the left if you go the other way it goes to the right so you can literally make that spawn make my new changes so that you can kind of hit the area so yeah, by spawning out the, the the mix you literally create little pockets of that cloudy mix in the area so if you then decide to to, to, to catch with the zig the trick with the zig is to overcast your zig so it lands like five meters behind or ten meters behind your swim and then leaving it for 10 minutes, giving it two turns with the handle, 
because you always fish with a zig on a tight tight line so it must be like guitar string tight then what you do you 10 minutes reeling two turns leave it 10 minutes two turns leave it and you do that 10 or 12 times so you can drag that zig through the target area and at some point you're going to encounter the fish whether they are behind that cloud or whether they're in front of the cloud and then you just keep on repeating that right so here it goes again falls in the water see what happens if it falls on, on its side it doesn't open you have to make sure that it falls on its nose so when I stop the line, if, I, if I've got it clipped up, I make sure that I hit the clip in the air so that I can guide it down nose first and it can hit the water. But it hits the water softer than it would hit on a normal cast and you just leave it to drop. Alright. So you'll notice that the spam actually does float. I've retrieved my one spam. I'll show you guys now. I've had a spam for about 15 years now I haven't lost it yet because Ferdi Delport wrote my, my, my cell phone number on it <laughs> <laughs> not because of that but the, the, the mere fact that you actually can um, so yes there is a, 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 a float that you can add onto your spawn that aids it um, to, to float but of you know I, I, I believe that it, it it interferes with the, the the range that I can get with it. What sort of rigs or what type of rig you use with what type of bait? Because it's not just so easy that you can use some of any bait and any rig and just attach them and think you're going to be catching. So watch out for this. <laughs>